Welcome to Haxby Shed. I'd like to tell you how I made this clutch drive for the table feed on this shaper. The shaper table is moved horizontally with this feed. And it's moved vertically with this feed. And both operate with a screw, a long threaded screw shaft. All machines have a tendency to break themselves if not used correctly. And the shaper is no different. And for safety then, it's a good idea to have a clutch on the table feed. Without a clutch, damage can be caused if the traversing part comes to the end, maybe up against a casting, and if a clutch is not there to slip, potentially it would strip the lead screw feed or it would snap the casting. So the clutch provides that level of protection. On this machine though, there's a level of built-in protection in the design for the horizontal movement of the table because the lead screw down here, the horizontal traverse screw, is not threaded to the end. And as the table moves across, eventually it gets to a point where the feed nut on the back here disengages from the thread and gets onto the plain part here. And it will do that before this edge hits this casting. And the same is true on the other side. So although it's a nuisance if the table comes off the end of the thread, it's quite difficult to get it back on. Um, at least if you were to set it going, go and have a coffee, forget all about it, come back and find this table's move right to the end, it would protect itself by the nut coming off the end of the feed screw. There is no protection, however, built in to the design of the vertical feed. The top of the table here will come right up to the top of the dovetail and possibly beyond as the nut winds its way up this screw. And also, traversing downwards, there's another danger. This leg can be extended onto this to support the front of the table when making heavy cuts. But it does present an obstacle if the table is driven down, eventually, however this is set, it will come up against this surface. And after that, if this ratchet continues, something has to break. So horizontally, the risk is low, but vertically, the risk of failure and disaster without a clutch is actually quite high unless the machine is watched carefully all the time. I've taken the clutch and ratchet mechanism off to show you. This is the horizontal feed and behind here this is the vertical feed. This is the clutch I made and this is the original. In both cases the drive is provided through a key. I've just turned the shaft so you can see the key. So the ratchet operates, the key engages and this is how it turns. This is the original and it's solid. There's no clutch of any kind here. Make a mistake um, you break the machine. My machine dates from about 1963. In later versions, Elliot themselves built a clutch into this ratchet mechanism. But the clutch operated by a friction pad on this face. And also, it required a screwed thread here on the end of this shaft and basically a collar would screw on and as it did it increased the friction 
on the pad, which gave the clutch effect. The problem was, the clutch had to be set up on this shaft. There was no screw thread on the lower shaft, which drives the vertical feed. And for some reason, and as an option, you could buy a mechanism which fitted into here with a stub shaft and a selector which it included the clutch on that shaft and a selector allowed <clears throat> this feed or the vertical feed to be chosen but it was really quite a complicated setup and it was only available if one bought the optional extra and that didn't um, appeal to me um, I thought I could make something much more compact which didn't need resetting when it was moved between shafts as this one is completely self-contained and the amount of slip is set with this nut which I'll now explain This is the optional extra vertical feed which I referred to in the video which I think is way over complicated. Well, my clutch operates by using something called a withdrawal sleeve for a bearing. And if I may just explain, I know most people, or many people anyway, would know all about this, but let me just explain momentarily. This is a plain bearing. both internal and external dimensions are parallel and this would normally be pressed onto a shaft if the bearing fails it has to be pressed off maybe the shaft has to be removed to press it off now in a machine situation a factory situation a production line situation when a bearing fails you don't want to take a machine down for a long period of time so it would be more convenient if one could remove the bearing without the press. And that's the purpose of this item, which is called the withdrawal sleeve. Now this is used with bearings which are tapered in the centre here. And this outside is tapered. It's tapered by about two degrees. The inside is plain. So I decided if I could make a ratchet wheel machine out the centre to fit this taper, two degree taper. If I could build a new shaft which carried the whole mechanism, I could make a self-contained clutch. So that was the idea. I could have cut this up, the original, but I didn't know if this was going to work. I didn't want to destroy the original. So that left me the problem of producing a new ratchet gear. And I don't have a milling machine. I said on other videos I made a decision not to buy a milling machine. So now I gave myself a big problem trying to figure out how to make this. It's only square cut. It's not involute. So that helps a, a, a great deal. I also had to cut the keyway which I managed to do on the shaper and I'll show some video of that process. So that's essentially the story and over the coming uh, or remainder of this I'll explain uh, the <laughs> how I did it and all the trouble involved but, but it works fine now and I can move this self-contained clutch from this shaft that way round, to the lower shaft, vertical and horizontal fees are then protected by the clutch. As many machinists know from experience, quite often one spends as long making tooling and adapters for a job than one does on the actual job itself. And to cut the keyway in here, I needed to make an adapter to take this boring bar into the shaper and here it is 
and it fits into the Shaper clapper box there and I machined and tapped two holes to hold the clapper box. Ideally I would have a much shorter bar than this because this even screwed tight here this bar flexes quite a lot but I had no choice because of the length of the keyway that I needed to cut. I had to make a new shaft for the ratchet mechanism which was longer to take the withdrawal sleeve. Next I set it up on the shaper to cut the keyway and this proved to be quite difficult to cut because of the amount of flex in the boring bar. I also had to make a blank for the new ratchet gear which I mounted on a 16mm bolt as a machining mandrel and I ground up a tool to cut the teeth on the shaper. It was one of those great ideas which wasn't a great idea. The tool kept snagging and chipping and in the end I just had to give it up as being not a great idea. So behind every plan A there is a plan B just waiting to be activated. And this cunning plan involved the spindexer with a small carbide end mill running in the lathe as fast as I could. I was only taking half a mill, 20 thou, off at a time, but I still broke two end mills. But I had my gear, and I bought it out with a two degree taper to fit the withdrawal sleeve. Next was assembly, and finally a bit of trimming. It had been a lot of work, but I was very happy with the end result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Hacks be shared.